Hey YouTube, it's Roman. Welcome to Workshop Wednesday, where we're gonna continue the discussion on the normal distribution from Math Monday, but this time in Python. On Monday, we defined the probability density function and the cumulative distribution function for the normal distribution. We also talked a little bit about the application and theory of the normal distribution and what it lets us do. But today we're gonna to be looking at all of those things in Python and we're gonna see how we can actually sample from a normal distribution and draw the probability density function as well as the cumulative distribution function. Alrighty, for starters, we're gonna import NumPy as MP and that's gonna let us actually draw from the standard normal distribution. And we're also going to import Seaborn as SNS. And Seaborn is a visualization library, very similar to matplotlib. But what it's going to do is it's going to give us a nice plot, a good continuous representation of the discretization of the normal distribution. We'll talk more about this in a minute. Now, how do we draw a sample from the normal distribution? Well, it's actually very easy using NumPy. All I have to do is say mp.random.randn and then if I run this cell, I'm going to get a draw from a special type of normal distribution, the standard normal distribution. And all a standard normal distribution is, is a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation and variance of one. So we see here, if we just keep running the cell, we're gonna get different random numbers. And that's because we are just sampling from this normal distribution, this standard normal distribution. If you recall from the previous video on Math Monday, we also said that we have something called the empirical rule, where if we deviate one standard deviation in either direction, 68% of the data is gonna fall within that range. Well, we can see this Monte Carlo simulation style using NumPy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say samples is equal to an empty list. I'm gonna say for i in range n, and I'm just gonna say n is equal to 10,000 samples. We are going to sample from this normal distribution, this standard normal distribution. And I'm going to append each sample. I'm going to say samples.append. I'm gonna append each samples to that samples list. If we go ahead and run this cell and then print the samples list, you'll see we just have a collection of draws from the standard normal distribution. And as I mentioned earlier by the empirical rule, if we were to take the interval of mu minus sigma, mu plus sigma, we know that approximately 68% of the data is going to fall within this range. So in the case of a standard normal distribution, we have X is distributed normally with a mean zero and a standard deviation and variance of one. Thus, if we were to sample a whole bunch of samples as we did, we are positive that 68% of the data is going to fall within mu minus sigma, mu plus sigma, or, in other words, this is simply the interval of negative one to one. And we can test this with this samples list that we just generated. One way of doing this is to just say count is equal to zero. So this is going to keep track of everything that falls within negative one to one. And then we'll say for sample in samples. So this is going to iterate through all of the samples that we generated in this list we can say if the sample is greater than or equal to negative one and the sample is less than or equal to one, meaning it falls within this range of mu minus sigma mu plus sigma, we are going to increment the count by one. So if we run this and before even printing the count, we know that we are going to get something around 6,800. And that's because we have 10,000 samples. And statistically, we know that 68% of the data is going to fall between plus or minus one standard deviation away from the mean by the normal distribution. So if we print the count, you'll see that we get 6,860, which is pretty darn close to 68%.
Okay, so we have a good idea of where the data falls in a standard normal or any normal distribution for that matter. Now let's see if we can draw that bell curve using the probability density function and visualizing a continuous representation using Seaborn. Here we have our normal probability density function and if we just substitute in the mean and variance for the standard normal distribution, you'll notice that we get rid of the sigma because that just becomes one and we also get rid of the mu because that is just zero and we are left with a relatively simpler representation of the density function for the normal distribution. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna define this function in terms of a standard normal density function. So I'm going to say def f of x as we know our mu and sigma values. And then I'm going to compute each term and then compute the product of the terms. So I'm going to say one over sigma root two pi is going to be d1. And I'm going to say one divided by, remember sigma is one, so I just need to do np dot square root two times np dot pi. So that's going to be d1. D2 is going to be this exponential here, e to the negative one half x squared. So I'm gonna say np dot x, I'm gonna do negative 0.5 times x squared. And then I'm just going to compute the product of D1 times D2. And that is our normal probability density function where we assume the mu is zero and the sigma is one. In this case, that is representing the standard normal density. We can use this probability density function to draw the bell curve very simply by specifying a domain. And I'm gonna say MP lin space from negative four to positive four. I'm gonna generate 10,000 samples between those two values. The range is going to be a function of that domain. And I can use Seaborn to generate a nice plot. So I'm going to say sns.limeplot d and r. And you can see we get the bell curve. And this is exactly what we would hope to see when defining a probability density function for a normal distribution. We would hope that it draws the bell curve. And we can see that we are successful in doing that. This is where things start to get pretty cool. So theoretically, this is the probability density function for a normal distribution, in this case, a standard normal distribution. But what about the samples that we have already generated? Well, we can use a KDE plot to see what the distribution of the samples that we generated earlier look like. So if I go sns.kde plot, and I pass that collection of samples from a standard normal distribution, you can see that the density is starting to approach the theoretical density that we had just plotted right here. And the more samples that we generate, the better this is gonna look. So if I go up here and generate instead 100,000 samples, and I'm just gonna go ahead and restart and run everything, we come down here and you can see we get a much nicer distribution. And if we extend these tails out from four and negative four, maybe to negative six and positive six, we can see that we start to get a distribution that really matches the theoretical distribution. So this is our theoretical distribution. And this is our empirical distribution. This is the one that we generated samples for. So you can see the more samples we generate, the more it converges to this theoretical distribution. So to wrap up this video, what I'd like to do is talk about the cumulative distribution function. As you can see, it's defined as the integral from negative infinity to x of f of s ds, where f of s is the probability density function that we just drew up here. But what I'm not going to do is what we just did earlier, defining the probability density function as a Python function. I'm instead going to use a prepackaged version of the cumulative distribution function using scipy. And that's just so we don't have to get into the technical mess of trying to discretize this integral. All right, so I'm gonna say from scipy.stats import norm. And then I can define the normal CDF as just norm.cdf. And then we can pass it a value. So this is for the standard normal distribution. 
and you can see that a value of zero is the mean of this distribution as we see by the density function here, meaning that half of the data is going to be below the mean and half of the data is going to be above the mean. So it has that symmetry in this case. Not all distributions have this, but this particular one does. And we can see that the probability of an outcome of this particular distribution being from negative infinity to zero is 50%. And this matches exactly what we would expect to see based on these two visuals. Moreover, we can just draw this distribution. So instead of doing norm CDF of zero, I'm just gonna do norm CDF of the original domain that we defined. And this is going to give us a range of probabilities for the interval with respect to negative infinity and that input from the domain. So looking at this cumulative distribution function, you can see that from our original domain, we specified evenly spaced points between negative six and six. And what we're doing here effectively with this norm.cdf is we are computing this integral from negative infinity to each point in that domain and generating this series of probabilities. So in terms of a cumulative distribution function, we are going to start at essentially zero and work our way all the way up to one. Visually, what does this look like? Well, if I specify the range of the CDF to be equal to this norm.cdf of our domain, I can do a new plot. I can say sns.line plot and then pass the domain and the range of the CDF and you can see that we get this S looking chart. And this is exactly what we would expect to see where we start at a cumulative probability of zero and work our way all the way up to one. Another way of interpreting this is just looking at the probability density function. And if we start all the way on the left and then sort of take the area under that curve, you'll notice that as we keep going to the right, we get more and more area. The area is going to correspond to the probability that an outcome is within that range from negative infinity all the way up until that point under the curve. And as we get further and further along and start to approach positive infinity from negative infinity, then we have the entire probability space. So that is why you see the CDF start to asymptotically approach one. We have 100% of the space. That is going to do it for this workshop Wednesday and this video on the normal distribution. I hope you enjoyed. Please feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or comments about the video. If you have any specific questions, you can always reach out to me, roman at quantguild.com. Be sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. It helps us continue to push out content to YouTube, Medium, and GitHub. Be sure to also check out quantguild.com. We just launched our first course, Introduction to Python. And a poll is going to be going out very soon to see what course you are most interested in next. So other than that, thank you once again so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.